Hello, welcome to Undyne Magic. It's your host Ty, and today we look at my creatures only of Romy the Dead Tide Midrange Mill list thing. Please like, subscribe, comment, share all the love. I appreciate it. A good friend and I decided to each build a creature on the list. The rules were every non land needs to be a creature. Modal cards and adventure cards can be used if they have creatures on them, and we can't use Trillian or Animals Commanders because that's too easy and boring. A Romy is one and Demir. She's got this ability, you tap her, exile cards equal to the number of opponents you have, which will be free every time, and a creature in your graveyard gains Encore. It gets exiled, you get free tokens that are copies of it, tapped and attacking. So we get all those ETBs. She gives us card advantage by accessing the graveyard, and ramp by giving us three times the amount of thing we pay for. And of course, cheating mana costs is one of the most powerful things you can do in the game. It's very good. Let's go straight into the wing con. Divining Witch is demonic consultation on a stick. Exile the library, fast as Oracle, ETB, classic win. Another line <laughs> is Mirror Mad Phantasm. If you make a copy of the Phantasm and shuffle that card in, we won't have any creature in the deck called Mirror Mad Phantasm because the original copy will be on the battlefield. So we put it our whole library into the graveyard, including Fasa's Oracle, if it's not already in our hand, and then we uncall her out and win. Um, the way you copy the Phantasm is by playing, running all the um, mirror image type creatures that exist in a game, spark double, stunt double, blah, 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 blah. More value win cons come in the form of Sir Conrad. Every time we mill a creature, damage. Creature die, damage. Exile creature to pay for the uncall cost, damage. Discard, damage. We have 63 creatures in this list. So yeah, Sir Conrad is going to be triggering a hell of a lot. It's ridiculous. Let's talk about Gary. Let's say we have no board state. We have some stuff. We, we have enough things in the graveyard to uncle Gary. And just a Romy on the battlefield. When the three Garys enter, they're going to count seven devotion. And they, and they enter at the same time. So, so it's going to be 3 times 7. We will gain 21 times 3 life and each opponent will lose 21 life. That's half the life total just by having our commander on the field and encoring Gary. If we have any other board state, more time, the opponents are just dead. The way we enable this win con is by playing a control game. Removal. Whatever stacks we have, not a lot. Whatever counter spells we have, there's only one. <laughs> I'm not winning Venser because uh, it's four mana. Forget it. Flesh Bag, Executioner, Play Crafter, and the other guy. They have this effect. Um, when they enter, each player sac sacrifices a creature, basically. When you encore it, it becomes three mana, kill nine creatures. It's really good. It's like a mini board wipe. And there's four of them in the deck. If they ever print more that do the same thing, I'm going to be cramming those in two. Notion Thief, just a brilliant hate bear. Um, Dorothy Voidwalker, some of the best graveyard hate we have access to. Priest of the Haunted Edge, is just a nice piece of removal. And Snow Basics are cheap. Brazen Borrower is a cheeky little instant speed interaction. He gotta have it. Hostage Taker takes out artifacts and it scales with a Wormy. There's loads more removal in this list. There's a lot of creatures like Ravenous Chupacabra that destroy a creature on ETB. We're running most of them. Um, there's just a lot of removal. Now let's talk about the card draw. God Eternal Bantu is a dull way to fill the graveyard after casting out a bunch of creatures. Um, Impaler Strike becomes 4 mana, draw 9. With a Romy, which is very, very good. Is it draw 9? It, it probably is. Greyborn Muse is a card that has been with me through every single Black Commander deck I've ever built. A lot of the cards we run, generally, in the Black Strategies, end up being zombies. It's a popular tribe. We have 10 in this list. The flow of the card is it's a Phyrexian Arena for one extra mana. And then anything else is gravy. Drawing two, three cards every turn for doing nothing is so good. Keske is really good. It fills a grave, it's a sack outlet, and it's card advantage. Jace's Archivist is just a wheel, which is okay. Bizarre Trade Mage is uh, some dope loot 
that scales with our commander. Watch it for tomorrow. Um, with the encore sacrifice clause becomes better than just drawing a card. It becomes impulse. And impulse in three times for two mana is very nice. Floating Dream Zubera. Uh, it scales with Aromi and becomes two mana draw six. It's so nice. Uh, let's talk about ramp. The most boring part. But it can be fun. <laughs> because the ranged assistant and Melekin. They're rocks and they mill. Ornithopter of Paradise. Great new card. Um, we need all the rocks we can get. We're playing creatures only. So being able to actually have efficient rocks is really good. Priest of Forgotten Gods is honestly so fantastic. It's a sack outlet. It's ramp. It's removal. And it's card draw. Like it literally, there is nothing that this card doesn't do. It's so good. Walking Atlas is okay. You need to make sure that you have plenty of gas though. So you always have a land to put down. Bog Rich is really great. Because uh, it just ramps you up by two. It's a nice bit of aggressive mana. Dreamscape Artist gives us Encore Fodder. A discard outlet. And it ramps. It's another one of those cards that hits several points. Um, that's a great part about deck building. It's just finding those. those ah. Cloud of Fairies is aggressive one time ramp. Allowing for some explosive turns. Kelpie Guide on all the other functional reprints of this effect. Act as slow ramp in the early game and then allow you to have explosive turns. Activating a Wormy several times a cycle. Um, Fate Stitcher, Vizier of Sands are the other cards that do that. Here's more ways we can mill ourselves aggressively. You've seen the all our ramp and card draw and literally everything in the deck mills us, but we also run stuff that just mill. Cephalid Constable, Magus of the Bazaar, Murfolk Looter, Maya Triton, Wailing Ghoul, Wall of Lost Forts, Crow of Dark Tidings, Throne of Death, a cheeky way to get an artifact, because of course the other side is a 6 6 Death Toucher. Um, Gorging Vulture, Stitcher Supplier becomes one mana mill 16. Which is ridiculous. Um, 16, no, 18, sorry. One mana mill 18. Um, Zudapult Duelist, uh, Hedron Crab, Merfolk Secret Keeper, Cheeky Little Sorcery, uh, Iceberg Cranix, B Tech, Hedron Crab, Stinkweed Imp, mill 5 every turn for no reason, and Doom Whisperer, another one of my pet favorite cards. This is probably my all time top favorite card of, of all time and space, all time. It's a beater. I love smashing face and uh, it's just it's like a combo player's every dream like not even a combo player just a spiky player I'm a very spiky player and the fact that I can just use I will literally drop my life total down to two or five every time I get this card out and mill everything it's so fun it's so good um let's talk about lands fetch lands and stuff Lands that have to go to the graveyard to do a thing are very good because they become encore fodder. Evolving wise, Grixis Panorama. I'm running all the panoramas. Ipnu, Rivulet, Mirad, Landscape, Gary Sanitarium, Cephalid Coliseum. If I had a budget, I'd be running Fetch Lands. Then let's talk about some standalone cards. Crashing Drawbridge. The only way in Demir to effectively give us stuff haste. There's another card that does it. I don't even remember the name. It's kind of jinky jank jank. Um, Auric Law Mage is the only tutor. They're running the list outside of the Devening Witch, whom we never use as a tutor. And the fact that she taps means that we can, of course, use the Kelpie Guide. Um, Kelpie Guide, woo, or whatever. Um, we can tutor several times a turn. We also run a bunch of recursion outside of Romy because you want redundancy in the list. I know, well, the way I build my decks, I know if anyone hates up my commander, I'm just going to continue doing my thing. If anything, they're wasting removal on a commander instead of the actual threat that's going to win me the game. I'd rather people lock up my commander and then uh, give me the window for my fastest oracle win rather than them be good at threat assessment. <laughs> but yeah, Hell's Caretaker and Apprentice Necromancer are two examples of recursion in the list. Um, there's a bunch that, that's on creatures. None of them are really super efficient. Like... I re I'm just waiting for them to, to print us a more efficient form of creature recursion but of course I have to be careful with it because putting recursion on a creature just opens up combo land um, that it is just what it does so yeah um, but yeah that's the list it's dope it's fun um, I love playing creatures 
I love combat and smashing face. It's yeah, yeah. Peace out. See you next week. Uh, boo boo boo.